Hello and welcome to episode 3 of The Complete Charting Guide. It is recommended that you watch video 2, the charting terms video, before you watch this one. If you are here to learn, then I highly, highly recommend that you take handwritten notes. Yup, dust off your old notebooks and pencils because this is going to be the fastest and easiest way for you to learn. People who don't take notes will only remember 2-3% to of information in a month's time, whereas people who take notes are going to remember up to 30 times that percentage. Additionally, taking notes by hand is vastly superior to taking notes with a keyboard in terms of conceptual understanding. I will preface this video by saying that Moonscraper is only available for Windows and Linux. There are multiple ways to install the latest version of Moonscraper for Windows. The fastest will be to use the charting programs command in the Clone Hero Discord, which will give you a direct link to the GitHub page. After that, follow what I'm clicking on the screen to get to the download. Once you have it downloaded, you'll want to run the .exe setup. Your PC might flag the .exe as a malicious content, but Moonscraper is 100% safe to use, so you can tell your PC to run it anyway. Follow the installation wizard and Moonscraper will be installed. If you want to get the latest test build of Moonscraper, you can get it from the Moonscraper Discord. In the charting programs command, the second link will take you to this Discord. Moonscraper is currently in long term support right now, so there won't be any more major updates. Still, if you want the true, most recent version, this is the way to go. After you download the setup and test builds, you can follow the installation wizard and you'll be good to go. Uh, I don't know, nah, shit about downloading for Linux, so I'll just edit this out and say like, this guy can do it, and then he'll do it. <laughs> now with Moonscraper installed, you can open it up for the first time. There's a lot going on here at first glance, but let's start with the tools box here on the left. First is the cursor tool, which allows you to select, move, and edit items. Next is the eraser, which, you guessed it, lets you erase items. Then there's the note, which lets you place down notes. I'll go a lot more in depth into this later. This bluish light icon is star power, which will get its own video. This triangle with a needle is the metronome, which will let you place down BPM markers. This 4-4 four, four thing is the time signature, which you will use to set the time signature for the song. These green lines are section markers. These will let you organize the song and will act like waypoints you can instantly move to by clicking on this white dot next to any of them. Before I show you the flag, you might have noticed that my high way is now light blue instead of black and that my notes at the bottom are gone. This is because clicking on the BPM, time signature, or section marker icons will take you into global mode. You can go into or out of global mode by clicking this globe icon next to the tools. It's not the most intuitive button, but you can hit G to toggle global mode instead. A lot of beginners forget about global mode and will have trouble with it for a bit, but once you get used to it, it will be a great asset for you. Now back to the flag. It does something different depending on if you are in global mode or not. If you're not in global mode it will be a red flag. In 99% of cases the only thing this will be used for is marking where solos start and end. If you are in global mode the flag will be blue and in 99% of cases will be used for lyrics. This first line is your step size or note value. If you watched the last video, you hopefully remember about note values. If not, don't be afraid to go back and watch it again. Anyway, these up and down arrows will change the step size. Here I am able to place 1 16th notes, but if I want to be able to place something in between these two, I need to increase the value to 1 over 32 so that I am now placing 1 32nd notes. Beneath that is the clap. Turning this on will make a noise every time a note goes by. If you want to change what makes that clap sound sound go off, you can hit this settings box and change that. Importantly, the default Moonscraper clap sound file is messed up, so if you want to make use of this feature, you'll have to change that sound file, which I'll show later. This slider is for hyperspeed, which will change how stretched out the highway is. This is useful because when you're placing notes very close together, it can get tough to see things clearly. Stretching the highway out like this will let you see things more easily. You can play around with this slider to see what amount you like the most. Next is the playback speed, which will change the highway speed and the audio speed. This is useful if you're charting something that is difficult to hear, you can slow it down and listen more carefully. Last is highway length. This slider will make your highway longer or shorter, and really is just personal preference. If you're using a high hyperspeed though, then I recommend having the highway length high as well. Also, clicking on this settings button here will just switch it to tell you the data stats of your chart. Not actually useful, but in case you accidentally click on it, now you know what's going on.
file will let you save your chart, although you will usually just hit Control plus S to do that. More importantly, file is where you will load your charts from, which is the equivalent of open in something like Microsoft Word. Instrument will let you choose which instrument the notes you're placing will be for. You only really need to use this in case you're charting a song for multiple parts, such as guitar and drums. In the very rare case that you're charting for Guitar Hero Live, this is how you can switch to that instrument. Difficulty lets you change which difficulty you're charting. You don't need to care about this unless you're doing any difficulty besides Expert, which is always the default difficulty when you load up Moonscraper. Clicking on Song Properties will open up this menu where you can put in the song information. Additionally, the Audio tab will let you put in the correct song audio, which will be its own video. And the Advanced tab will be able to generate the song.ini for you, which will also get its own video. The Tools tab, which is separate from the Tools box, looks like it has a lot to it. The only times you'll really be opening this though, is to use the BPM calculator and the Lyric Editor if that's how you want to do lyrics. I'll go over those settings in different videos though. The Options tab contains your main settings menu, which I'll go over later, and the Help tab doesn't have anything useful in it unless you're curious about information about Moonscraper. Over here are these two arrows, which will be your Undo and Redo buttons, which again, you'll just use keyboard shortcuts for. This tiny icon with the two guitars will let you play test your chart. You'll have to set up your controller for that, which I will get to later. This triangle is actually a play pause button, which you will also just commonly use the keyboard shortcut for spacebar. This tab lets you choose to see the waveform on the highway, which is highly useful. I recommend having it on song to help you visualize where notes are unless you know what you're doing with these extra audio sources. There are multiple ways to move around your chart. You can scroll up and down to move a little bit, or you can click on this big gray rectangle on the right side to jump to any part instantly. As a quick side note, this yellow marker is where you are currently looking at. In addition, this percentage is what percent of the way you are in the song. For example, if I go to about halfway here, you can see how it says 50%, and if I'm at the beginning, it says zero. Above that is the time you're looking at in the song, measured in minutes, seconds, then milliseconds. Anyway, as I mentioned earlier, you can also click on the these white dots next to the section names and that will take you to that section marker. You can also hold alt and then scroll which will scroll through the sections. A less common way but a way nonetheless to get around is to use arrow keys or page up and page down. Finally if you press the middle mouse button in you can move through your chart very quickly and pretty accurately. This and clicking on dots next to section names are my favorite ways to get around my charts but do whatever makes the most sense to you. If you want to check these again, or you want to change some of these shortcuts, note, not all shortcuts can be changed. Click on options and at the bottom, click controls, which will open this menu with all the shortcuts in it. I'm going to assume you know all the default Windows shortcuts like control C, control S, and so on. Control Z is to undo, and control Y or control shift Z is to redo. Alt A selects mostly everything in the section. Q decreases step size and W increases it. E toggles extended sustains. M toggles the metronome. F toggles the forcing on notes holding right click on something and then pressing left click while still holding right click will delete that item. Of course, spacebar is to play or pause the audio. You can also set and change hotkeys for the toolbox icons, but I find clicking on them more simple. As promised, it's time to talk about all those things I said I'd say later. When you click on the note tool, it will open up more menus. At the bottom left, these two checkboxes will allow you to change your notes to taps or invert the forcing. These two options will get their own video about how and when to use them effectively, so I'll leave it at that for now. This box, which says type on it, will let you change from placing colored notes, green, red, yellow, blue, and orange, to the purple open notes. Open notes will also get their own video. You can do this with different tools selected as well, but holding right click and dragging on a note will allow you to create a sustain. I'll go more into this in a different video. As I mentioned before, the default clap audio in Moonscraper is messed up. To change this, you'll want to find where you downloaded Moonscraper. I believe the default folder is Program Files x 86 on Windows. Then you'll click on Moonscraper Chart Editor, Moonscraper Chart Editor Data, Streaming Assets, and SFX. This folder will have a file called clap.wave. All you have to do is get a different audio, call it clap.wave, and overwrite this file with your new sound. If you want, I have a download to the fixed version of this clap linked in the description. Otherwise, you can make this sound anything you want.
Again, you can open the main settings menu by clicking options and then settings. If you play clone here with lefty flip on and prefer to see everything that way, you can enable lefty flip. Just know that watching this guide might get a bit wonky because I will not be using lefty flip. Toggling extended sustains can be done with E so you don't have to touch this checkbox. Now for the sustain gap, you have to have this enabled. Set it to time based and set the time in milliseconds to any value you want between 65 and 85. This sustain gap is going to be the amount of space between the end of a sustain sustain and the note immediately at the end of it. This situation here is what I'm talking about. You can play around with the number and see what looks good to you, although honestly, if you feel like you don't know anything about charting yet and you don't know what looks good or bad, I've taken a poll and it seems like nearly everyone uses 65 to 70 for their sustain gap. If you want to be lazy here, you can just choose 70, which is what I use. These reset positions are personal preference, but I keep them off. You want to keep validate song on save on, which will tell you if anything is really messed up and will break when you export the chart every time you save. Gameplay start delay and target FPS are personal preference, and the background changing will only happen if you have multiple custom backgrounds set up, but that is also personal preference. You want to keep slow down pitch correction off because it will make the audio sound terrible when you slow the song down too much. You also want to keep new song resolution at 192, and you don't have to worry about what that does. If you switch tabs to audio, you can change the master volume, which I like to keep at half, and you can change the panning, which you should only do if you're hard of hearing in one of your ears or if one of your speakers or headphones doesn't work. You can ignore these two other tabs as they don't have anything in them worth changing. To do this, you'll want to go to Options, Controls, then click on this arrow here next to Editor, which will put you in the Controls menu for your guitar. Make sure you have your controller connected to your PC, and you should be able to click this arrow next to the keyboard to switch the controls to your actual controller. Here, you can click the controls to change it, and then click the corresponding button on your controller. Once you've finished with all the controls, you should be able to play test by clicking on the button that looks like the two guitars. To change this, you'll want to go to where you downloaded Moonscraper. Then you'll click Moonscraper Chart Editor, Custom Resources. In this folder, all you have to do is drop a 1280 by 720 JPEG in here and name it Background-0. If you want to change other things like the highway, note sprites, and so on, there's a text document named FileNames.txt here, which will show you the correct file names to use to make those images work. If you want to change your look but don't want to go through all that hassle, there's a few custom community-made skin packs in the Moonscraper discord such as an 8-bit theme, a Guitar Hero World Tour theme, and a Rock Band theme. Thank you for watching this video. Next time we will talk about getting and setting up your song audio. Until then, happy charting.